All right. Heading back up. The next charge of Bruce Pettit and his fearless immortal. Right? <laughs> Not believe the camera guy put a ho ho or a Susie Q or a Twinkie in the same category of the Sonic Jalapeno Popper. No, ho hos taste delightful. <laughs> if we were gonna stop at that if that gas station would have been open, I was gonna buy a box of those little Susie, what little Debbies or whatever yes. Susie Q so things somewhere. or hostess. Oh, I was gonna go for the powdered donut. Oh yeah, oh, I, that, that's a weakness. <laughs> Camera guys, you got to tell me, hey, you got powdered sugar on your upper lip. You might want to wipe that off before we do this interview. <laughs> my wife lets me walk around with a dot of chocolate on the end of my nose because when I eat ice cream, I always lick the bowl. <laughs> when you get far enough in there, you end up with That's something there. Yeah. And she's disgusted by it, so now she doesn't tell me if I got a chocolate she dot. She doesn't make eye contact. Yeah, well, she'll let me go into town, go to work oh, with okay. a chocolate dot That's on the end of my nose. Well, folks, I'm not sure what got filmed while we just took naps. Is it we or is it me? You know? Me. I heard you snoring before I took my I gotta, nap. I got to tell you, every every 20 minutes of sleeping on a, on a mountaintop like this uh -huh. with the sun shining and what, 55 degrees? Yeah. It's 
worth it's worth a couple hours of regular regular nap time. yesterday we hiked down in the bottom of this canyon in spite of my better warning of doing so bruce said oh we won't go all the way to the bottom so we stopped 400 feet off the bottom and we had to climb out what in the dark in the dark through the deadfall 1200 feet we got back to rio doso last night at what 11 uh yeah three hour yeah, hike out of there at least and then drive in and the only thing open was the sonic and if you eat sonic at 11 30 at night it's you aren't going to get a good night's sleep mm -hmm. i didn't <laughs> and you I, didn't even have the, the jalapeno popper i know <laughs> you know i asked these folks if they heard a sonic boom last night because <laughs> i was I was doubled over, man. Oh. <laughs> Bruce, you came up with the dumbest plan I think I've ever heard. It's a brilliant plan, plan Randy. It's brilliant. Oh, God. Seriously. You're excited for it, though. You got kind of pumped up. You're a little pumped. I can feel it. That's because I see it has a terminal end. <laughs> Two years ago, Bruce shot a bull down in the bottom. We spotted it from this side. It took us seven hours to cross go down and across and up the other side and we got back to our room that night at like 3 3 30 three, in the morning three, four, yeah i got on my knees and said a prayer of thanks for being unharmed other than my left knee that still is not the same but <laughs> i was still breathing and i made a vow to the man above that if i ever consider not go but even consider going down in there you can amputate both legs and in the last half hour, the consummate salespeople to my right <laughs> have convinced me that it's worth a double amputation because we're going to go down in there again tomorrow. It didn't have anything to do with the 22 bulls you saw down in there. Randy. There's a lot of bulls down there. I, and here's what, <laughs> you know why I think Bruce wants this plan? Because his <laughs> beloved Broncos are playing tonight. And I, I, I'm thinking he figures, well, if I sit out and rest and watch the Broncos, we can really give it hell tomorrow. Yeah. So I would say that we better get to the log cabin and have some breakfast. Yeah, we got a little hike out still. And then we better do that before better judgment comes because my liver isn't doing that well today. And my wife told me one of the main problems when my liver flares up is bad judgment. All right, well, let's do. Let's get out of here. All right. Look, you load them up. I'll be right behind you. Okay. <laughs> As you can see, we stayed at a pretty pretty ritzy wall tent this trip. Rented a VRBO, vacation rental by owner. And uh, this right here is an antelope that we shot on the way over here from Arizona and I told Bruce that we were saving these antelope back shops for a special special reason and the special reason is he talked me in that tomorrow we we're going into a place I vowed I would never go again we went there two years ago and it almost killed me so this is like the last supper you know the last supper for a hunter should include antelope back trap. So I'm gonna go throw them on the grill here. They let me sleep for the last four hours, man. Whew. Rick Van Winkle didn't sleep as hard as I did. What? I think light's easy. If you wonder why it is that I antelope hunt, here's your answer. The only bad part is the taste of this is not going to come through on video as well as it will in real life. I don't know. What's that? That's so much meat. That's an entire backstrap off one buck antelope. Oh, this oh yeah. Prong one. I tell you what, folks. If you don't like this, then you're not my friend. Turn the channel. Don't even watch here. Look at that, huh? Oh. For those of you who are wondering, Marcus is like the vegetable king. 
I am? I don't know about that. Yes. <laughs> he went out to Manhattan, Montana. The, the home of, of the potato world. He handpicked those potatoes. And then when we were down here in New Mexico, I think he poached somebody's bell peppers and someone's zucchini. But he cooked all this, so if it's not any good, we're blaming it on him. Or just went to Albertsons. Or you go to Albertsons. If you don't want to poach someone's zucchini, you go to Albertsons. Good. 